When it comes to attracting birds to your yard, water, a bird bath, is certainly a good idea. But there are really four things that birds need. The first, water. The second, food. The third, nesting sites. And this place has those in abundance. And the fourth thing they need is protection. Protection from the elements and protection from predators. We're going to go around this yard and do several things that will bring more birds in. And we're going to start by putting up a traditional pole bird feeder. You see these two rocks sitting here? I'm going to put them around the base of the bird feeder, leaving as little soil showing as possible. Because frankly, birds are messy eaters. And they drop a lot more seed than they actually eat. And some birds, like sparrows and doves, prefer to feed on the ground than rather at a feeder. So the dropped seed will land here on the stones, other birds will pick it up and eat it. We will want to recess those in the soil though. So we'll cut around the stones and then take the sod out and place the stone down in the lawn. Another reason for recessing the stones is so that we can mow right over them and not have to trim around them. There are two things you should think about when you're putting up a pole feeder. One is put it far enough away from trees that squirrels can't jump down to it from above. And make sure it's easy enough for you to get to to keep it full. But not all birds come to bird feeders. Some birds prefer to eat fresh fruits and berries right off the shrub. So do I. So we're going to be putting in a viburnum, nice big red berries. And after a good frost, these will sweeten up and birds will get fat on them. We'll also be putting in a catoniaster for the same reason. This is a shady location and not just any plant will grow here, but if you're putting in a bird sanctuary in a sunny place, you've got bayberries, hollies, deciduous hollies, and numerous other plants. Check with your extension agent or a local nurseryman to see what kind of plants do well in your area and attract birds. Now here's another tip. When you're planting something like this, always rough up the sides of the hole with your spade so that the roots can get into the surrounding soil. Since this is so heavy clay, let's amend the soil with some good organic matter. In this case, I'm going to use some garden soil for trees and shrubs. Mix that thoroughly into the backfill. Now I'm planting this viburnum close to the edge of the woods for two reasons. One is it'll like it here and do well. The other is that no one will ever have to mow around it. Low maintenance is always a good idea. What we do next is backfill the hole with our amended soil and then water it in thoroughly. It's just like planting any other tree or shrub. The cotoneaster we're going to put further up the slope. Again, it'll spread wide and we don't have to mow around it if we go far enough. Now let me show you one more thing you're probably already aware of that'll help attract birds. Now I'd like to put up a suet feeder. That's always a good idea. But there are no low limbs on this tree and this is where I want it. It's right in the middle of the yard and highly visible from the deck. I could drive a nail into it. It wouldn't hurt the tree that badly. But if I tie it on with a string, that'll work fine. Now when you're hanging a suet feeder, there are two things to keep in mind. First, always buy suet that says it's for all weather usage. If not, it'll turn rancid in warmer climates. The other thing is to make sure that you get a plastic coated suet feeder, not bare metal. The reason for that is that bare metal during the winter time can actually make a bird's eye stick right to the feeder, just as your tongue would if you licked a frozen metal pole. It's terrible. Plastic coated suet feeders, all weather suet. And there you have it, your own bird sanctuary, complete with water, food, shelter, and nesting sites. What more could a bird want? Mm -hmm.